Refreshing the page to verify it worked. Woo! All right, it's working. Yay! One person in the chat room. Me. You should probably head on over there just to check. Can the machine handle it? It is a machine. We built it so it can run this crap. Do it. You can do it. Oh, my brain just blanked on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Twonkhammer. I know. <laughs> I couldn't remember Twitch TV for some reason. I'm just gonna keep the microphone at my face while I slurp on this extremely delicious steak. Well, we're here. We're streaming. We are. Awesome. So, why are we doing 30 days of streaming? Why not? 30 days of streaming. Get our names out there more. Spread it on. Spread it on nice and thick. Like butter. Charity. The charity is mm. my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> His pockets always need lining. I'm not going to beat around the bush. That's how it is. <laughs> Charity is my pocket. All right. I need road because my computer can't handle all this. If you want me to, I if you want me to, I can set up streaming as an alternate when I'm around. Yeah, we'll worry about it later. Okay. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. All I know is it's it's very taxing on this poor computer. Right. It, it can't handle it. Can't handle juice. What the hell is this? A game called P R I H A Y W B F R F Y H. Huh? Short for The Rapture is Here and You'll Be Forcibly Removed from Your Home. What? Is the name of the game. <laughs> what? That's a In bit which ridiculous. Players have only 20 minutes before the end of the world wipes out their existence. Obviously, it's an indie game. Obviously. Free to play. Um, <laughs> features haunting narrations taken directly from the works of H.P. Lovecraft. I don't, know, I don't even know who that is either. You don't know who H.P. Lovecraft is? Really? Yeah. Have you not heard of Cthulhu? I've heard of Cthulhu, yes. He's the guy who wrote all the Cthulhu mythos. Yeah, that's, that's all H.P. Lovecraft. Lovecraftian or He's that guy. That guy. Yeah, that guy. Apparently the game is 22 minutes long. Hmm. Alright, so let's officially start this shit and caboodle. Let's do it. I'm not playing the tunes right now. Because that would just destroy my computer if I try to open it. Okay. So, it's time for the band hammer! What's up, everybody? This is Sam from the Band Hammer. We're doing 30 days of podcasting just to kind of reach out to the community a little bit more and say hello to everybody and get more interest in our show. Uh, randomly, we'll have different hosts on each day, and we're going to run about 9.30. We got a little late start today because we're getting things set up. Um, some of the people that I was expecting to be here didn't end, ended up not showing up, which is fine. Whatever. Um, you could check us out live at 9.30 every day for the next 30 days, or for the next 28 days after today. Uh, you could check us out live at twitch.tv slash twonkhammer at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And beyond that, we hope you enjoy it. Now, we're, like I said, it's going to kind of be a little bit more laid back. We're just going to kind of talk about a couple different articles on each of the episodes. If we happen to break out into our normal random 
hell that we do. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but I only have two of the guys here with us today, which is cool. I'm I'm, I'm happy that anybody showed up. So, uh, Dan, what's up, Dan? Just hanging out. Awesome, and Mr. Dave Belcher. Good evening. Who might be off eating at steak? So if there's a delay, that's what he's doing. Is that all you've been eating since you moved to Texas? Pretty much. It's it's the paleo way of life. Just eating cow <laughs> and chicken occasionally. <laughs> I saw you had bison. Did you figure out what you're doing with that? Yeah, I'll probably just make a burger from it. Um, the guy I added to my tweet, uh, Mario Batali, basically yeah. he's some professional chef in Australia. But if you tweet him, he generally always responds with something. Like, Mario um, Batali is him, in Australia. Is that what you just said? I think so. Mario Batali is an Italian sh- Italian chef who lives in America. Okay, then he's not in Australia. I have been malinformed. <laughs> but, but anyway, so. But, he typically does respond, though, with, with useful things. Like, um, I was stuck one day, and I didn't know what to use to, instead of eggs, to make yeah. my um, my burgers, because I had no eggs. I was like, what the hell could I use? So I asked around, somebody said to tweet him, so I tweeted him, and he responded um, half an hour later saying, mayonnaise, which, of course, is just eggs and oil. And salt, so, but yes. Yeah. Well, depends how it's made. But, um, yeah, so apparently you can substitute mayonnaise where you would use eggs in the, the manufacture of burgers, which actually might be quite tasty. How often do you use, I have to ask, how often do you use eggs in your burgers? Every time. Really? Well, it's what holds, it's what binds the meat together. So you get, um, for every half kilo of beef mince, chuck in one egg. That's it. I don't always it do the egg. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I put it in every time. Um, otherwise, you just get end up with a crumbly mince pile. Well, I don't know because sometimes I'll throw, you know, chop up some onion, throw some onion in there. Oh, no, I use onions or... as well. So I'm not going to with the yeah. bison because the bison has to stay pure. But um, but for my normal burgers, I fry up uh, an onion, um, kilo of beef. Um, of eggs, um, either like whatever herb I decide to throw in, like parsley or rosemary or whatever, um, just squidge it all up for a while and split it up into um, a dozen or so burgers, freeze most of them, and then have them every morning for my breakfast. Because burgers for breakfast is awesome. Burgers for breakfast? Yeah, it's too, right? That sounds amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I love... I love... I love burgers, so that sounds just fantastic to me. Yeah, well, I don't have the buns, but I have the the beef patty um, with some scrambled eggs with bacon and crap in, um, and a bit of leafy salad, and that's my breakfast pretty much every morning. See, now that sounds the good. Paleo lifestyle. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to back up a little bit. Scrambled <laughs> eggs and bacon inside the burger? Oh, no, not in the burger. Alongside. Oh. The burger. Bacon oh. scrambled eggs. Okay. All right. I like You got that. me excited. <laughs> you got Sam all excited. I'm not going to lie. I've been on this kick lately. Like when I went up to Pittsburgh a couple months ago before I started my new job, I went to Red Robin. Uh, you know, we got a Red Robin down here, but I don't go there very often because it's kind of out of the way. But the Red Robin up there was across from my hotel. And I, I mean, I'd really enjoy Red Robin's hamburgers. Just their their sandwiches are, are amazing. So I went and got a Royal Red Robin burger. And it has a cracked, it has a fried egg on it. And it, it is amazing. So lately, like I have a couple frozen patties here from a party we had back in October. I mean, they're frozen patties, so they're still good. They're Angus beef. They're delicious. So... I just throw a patty on, throw an egg on next to it, fry it up. Once it's all fried up, bam, put that on a bun. Take your bite and just ooze the yolk just comes right out and it's amazing. No, this is this is definitely good. But I've just posted a uh, link to a picture of my standard stock breakfast to Pat out posted the 
Twitch chat as well to show off my culinary expertise. It's mostly a mess, but it's damn tasty. Looks tasty. You got some tomatoes in there, some spinach. That's actually red bell pepper. Whatever. It's all the good. <laughs> it, it's all good stuff, man. And it's it's like 100% paleo plastic. So, um, There's Dave's breakfast weeks. for those of you who are in Twitch right now. Yeah. That looks that amazing. So I thought they found out that the paleo diet was bullshit. So yes and no. I've been having this debate with people over the last few days, but the basis that the paleo diet is accurate to how we lived as caveman is bullshit. I mean, the caveman, um, like the whole thing, is mostly just a gimmick. Like yeah. rural, big, ugh, lift heavy things, eat like caveman is is a gimmick. For, um, but, but what the basis of the diet is um, rooted in scientific fact, and, and uh-huh. it's also rooted in kind of new developments for the people that are researching nutrition, like the whole thing about cholesterol actually not being a um, a bad thing to eat at all. Like you cannot get cholesterol from eating cholesterol; it's just physi- physiologically impossible. Um, what cholesterol what? is. Is okay, cholesterol ahead, is generated this. to um, help your body fight other inflammation, inflammations and damage caused by other bad food you eat. Um, so it's there when you have your heart disease and things, high cholesterol. But it's, that's things, those things aren't happening because of the cholesterol. The cholesterol is just there. The analogy you can use so, is like a fire truck. So every time yeah. you see a fire, you'll see a fire truck. Does that mean the fire truck is causing the fire? No. No, the cholesterol's okay, there because okay. the cholesterol's fighting the bad stuff that's causing you the heart disease. So, um, stop eating the crap and uh, keep eating the cholesterol, and your cholesterol will drop. Interesting. Magic. Hmm. So if I cut out the bad shit, my cholesterol goes down, but I can still eat steaks. You can eat all the steaks you like. Steaks. Eggs, oh my god. She classed as a meat. <laughs> The things Chickens, you learn on the bandhammer. Salads. Like, cook everything in butter. Full fat butter. And I'm not even kidding. Because it's full of the uh, essential fatty acids. Uh, the essential saturated fats that your body needs. That's Get amazing. the healthy vegetable oil because that's bad for you. Go straight for the butter. Steak cooked in butter is the best thing on the planet. <laughs> You are just validating everything I like to eat, Dave. Too right. Dan, fat, Dan, fat is good Dan <laughs> in a diabetic's world, what is what is the paleo diet doing to you? Uh, it's everything that I need to do. <laughs> oh, really? Because it is. So you got to cook in butter? Uh, well, it, it's everything that's good for me because it uh, a steak is all protein. You know, it's not, it's yeah, no I, carbs. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. Right. So it's. Is that it's... That's Dave. That's the other Dave. It's the other Dave. So yeah, the, the paleo diet is actually something I'm considering trying because it's it's one of those things that that I can do and I can actually eat with without really much concern and my my uh, blood sugar is not going to suffer from it. That it's is amazing. It's going to stabilize a lot more. Yeah. Huh. I'm, I'm not having a pee right now. I am just filling up a glass of water. I am going to start eating butter cooked steak. All right. Now we got to move on. Let's get into the real shit. So uh, we're just going to cover some of the news that we saw today. My biggest thing that I saw today, which actually came out yesterday, but there was a um, blog post from the general manor manager of Max's Emeryville studio, Patrick Buckner. Buchner? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help myself. You couldn't resist, could you? I couldn't, because it's Buchner. B-U-E-C-H-N-E-R. Patrick Buchner. So, let's get right to it. SimCity Offline is coming. Hey, guess what, EA? A little too late. Just going to put that out there. 
Were they, um, did EA actually say they were never going to do an, uh, an offline mode? For, yeah, Rodent mentioned that game. yesterday. Yesterday on the Banhammer episode 73, which you can go listen to right now. It was a hilarious episode. Uh, but yes, Road said that same ex- that exact line. They are never going to do offline mode. Yesterday, so Road, you were wrong. Take that, you bastard! <laughs> Not even here to defend yourself. Um. So here's what he has to say. He says, uh, "I've wanted to say those words for quite some time. So my apologies. I didn't take the time to say Happy New Year first. Yes, offline is coming as a free download with update 10 to Awesome City players. When we launch it, all of your previously downloaded content will be available to you at any time without the need for an internet connection. Uh, We are in the late phases of wrapping up its development, and while we want to get it into your hands as soon as possible, our priority is to make sure that it is as polished as possible before we release it. So until then... Testing, testing, and more testing. As one of the final steps, we're putting offline into the hands of some of our most hardcore players, the dev testers. Uh, This group of volunteers is going to put offline through its paces before we release it. Um, I just want to put this out there. And then you guys can comment. Uh, I tried to go back and play SimCity by myself the other day. I was terribly bored. Because you can't just build a random ass city anymore. No, no you it's can't. It's so constrained into those little squares. I haven't actually played because I was so put off by the whole debacle. Yeah. So are you still restricted into your little cubes of the world as such? Yes. Now, I mean, I could jump out and go into another one and start developing there and then jump out and go to a third and jump in, you know, start developing there. But the problem there is is that I'm jumping around way too much. You know, what's to stop me from just dumping 10 power plants in one city and building nothing else, and then all the money that that city gets comes from the other cities that I build in, in the area? Well, I think that's partly that was partly the point, to, to build collaboratively and, and, and plan that way. But you know what it it failed it really did in that regard because it the game is no longer fun uh, unless you're playing with others and you know uh, i'm in the same boat you are sam i went back and and tried to play it a couple months ago and i just i i probably played it for about five minutes and logged off and i haven't touched it since because it uh, I, i just i couldn't I, um, so, go ahead. I was going to say, so what do you think about all this, this modding stuff, man? These restricted modding, do you think that's going to breathe some life into the game? Um, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. Is the problem? Like, uh, I mean, are we going to see people get super creative and create like dinosaur zoos that are that the dinosaurs can break out, or are they going to just be like, oh? Here's a little building that I built, and that's it. You know, so it'll be interesting to see how far it goes. And and the problem with the way, at least the way we, you know, we mentioned it on the Van Hammer yesterday that the way the uh, the modding is being done in, in, right now is it, it is so restrictive that you can't break any of these rules. Um, some of which I agree with, others of which. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, the point of modding is to be able to to do what the game cannot or wasn't necessarily designed for uh, in its initial incarnation. And yeah. with the restrictions placed on the modding community, I, I don't see how it's it's a viable option for them to to even go down the, that road. I just I don't get it. Yeah, well, here's yeah, that's your super strong hold. The the rules are as follows: mods must not jeopardize the integrity of the gameplay or harm the experience of others. Mods must not infringe on any copyright, trademark, patent, trade secret, or other intellectual property of any third party, and will not continue <laughs> content that is unlawful. So, in other words, you can't make Twonk Hammer Tower. Okay, this is not yeah. happening. 
Uh, but that's the mod... point of modding. People want to make, like, take right. Skyrim modding, for, for the example. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of that that dragon, but it's you know it's bellowing some instead of what it instead of a Macho it, Man it, Dragon. Ma- the Macho Ooh, Man Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't I'm gonna do get that. You. you couldn't do something similar <laughs> like that in 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 um Scott, in um, Sim City because it's a third party idea. I think this is a case of EA's size. To be honest with you, they're they're too big for their own good, and it's and it's like a situation like this where that that size is going to hurt them. Because I mean, if, if they were to have like a Pepsi Cola, somebody built a Pepsi Cola factory and you can plop it in your city, I think you're, they're going to be faced with, oh well, that's a Pepsi factory. You owe us money, you know. Yeah. So, um, plus so you got to remember. I mean, it. they do. They, they will. I mean, people will do it, but they'll, those models will be limited to themselves and won't be able to, you know, uh, hand them out to anybody. Right. What's going to happen in, in that sense is, um, you know, EA is constantly working with companies for uh, like advertising. Like, you can put Nissan Leaf buildings or, excuse me, charging stations in SimCity right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so they that's that's their advertising. So if you were to go for a third party or, you know, another market, you're going to be faced with issues upon issues there. What I'm hoping yeah. to see are maybe new maps come out of the modding community. That that would be if if EA allows us to create larger maps. That would be the one yeah. benefit I can see coming from from this modding update yep yep i mean that would that would be huge to me absolutely monstrous i mean think imagine because you know everybody the one thing a lot of people want is bigger maps so if we had bigger maps oh my god you know that would be amazing so um but you know in terms of modding dave i'm looking forward to it see what people come up with um, I'm not like I said. I'm not a big player like I was when the game first came out. I mean, I we sunk hours. Oh, into we this. did. <laughs> and, I can't tell uh, you how many hours collectively as twelve camera we sunk into that. Yeah, I mean, we now we we can't even. Most of us can't even fathom playing. I you know if a bunch of the guys were like, hey, let's go back and play. I wouldn't mind it because I'm sending. I'm putting it out there right now. I'm just going to send. Uh, send all my crime out to everybody. <laughs> well, you did that anyway. I know. I'm just going to keep doing it. That's that's all that matters. I'm going to put a bunch, a bunch of police stations in the middle of the city, and it's going to push crime out to the outsides. So, out of interest, is there actually a kit for modding the game, or is it like people are just going to hack on the client without modifying the client? I did not see any mention of any kind of modder's kit. At all, actually, and that—that's uh, another short sightedness on EA's part. They're going to allow modding, but they're—they're not, they're not going to provide a modding kit. That's just asking yeah, I mean, because it's—it's easy enough to say we're providing you with these tools to provide to create modifications, and we put our own restrictions around these tools. Therefore, don't try to circumvent those restrictions. But what they're actually doing is saying. <laughs> Yeah, go for your life and hack around with the client, but don't hack around with the client. And yeah, that kind of makes no sense. <laughs> I, I like I like the uh, the first comment that's on this uh, the modders page. Maxis, your buildings are bland. You should feel bad. Therefore, I am now declaring it official that I will go out and therefore create my own wonderful buildings for others. No more boring brown boxes, cute little houses, or big glass skyscrapers. The Sims demand castles, temples of the far eastern lands, the retro-futuristic world of Art Deco. We, they want mega towers to be full of magic. They want more parks. My Sims demand more, and I will bring them that more. And you're welcome to watch these buildings come to life, because there's nothing more fun than truly turning that plot of land into a city that is very much my way. And now I'm officially beginning my work. That guy's all pumped up. 
And rightly so, he should be. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting if people did do, like, a medieval times. So SimCity medieval. There is actually a game that. being developed by Shining Something Studios. What the fuck is that? Uh, crap, I can't remember the name of this, the studio, and I have to look it up on YouTube. But uh, there's a guy who is by himself developing a game with the Switch accounts. Come on, YouTube. Thanks for failing me again. <laughs> he's He's been developing this game for quite a few months now, I guess. Uh, Shining Rock Software. So you can go look up Shining Rock Software on YouTube. And um, right now he just put up a new video nine hours ago of the game. Like what what is what it's all about. And it's pretty much a medieval Sim City, which you get to kind of plop your own stuff. It's not it's not fully automated like Sim City is or can be. So Um Alright, let's move on. Unless you guys have anything you have anything, anything you want to add about Sim City? No, I'm still out of my head. I no. think you nailed that pretty pretty heavily. Good. All right. Uh, what do you got, Dan? What was your article there, big guy? Um, apparently, I've been in the dark for the past 13 years. I wasn't aware that China had a ban on game consoles in general. Um, oh, yes. I don't know. Right. I, I don't know how I missed that, but uh, earlier today, they announced that they're cracking, in a press conference, they're cracking the gaming window a little bit. They are allowing... Um, game consoles into the country uh, legally with a stipulation um, that the things created for the consoles or, or the things played for the consoles can't be hostile to China or um, and they must conform, uh, conform with the outlook of China's government. Um, uh, um, that's just it's it's an interesting it's an interesting crack. I, I think it's a good crack, but the fact that um, that everything created, everything developed, everything played has to um, uh, can't be hostile to China. Ha- has to conform with the their government. Um, that's just that's putting you're seeing you're seeing a, China open up standard. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, Battlefield Four came out, and the three factions in Battlefield Four: the U.S., the um, Russians, and the Chinese. And immediately, China banned the game. Right, it was never even released for China at all, anyway. But they banned it. They said it will never be released there. And I, I mean, I can kind of understand where they're coming from. I mean, they're they're a communist country. Uh, they they are, you you know. You're born and you already have your job for when you're 30 years old. Right. You know, that kind of deal. Um, so I can I can understand where they're, what they're trying to attack there. But it's a huge leap forward for China overall. It is. It is. I mean, we won't see any Tiananmen Square in any games or anything, but uh, it's definitely a step forward. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I, yeah, I think that's a good step for them, personally. Um, Dave, you wanted to talk about the Ocu- Oh, sorry. Do you guys have anything else you want like to discuss on the Chinese? I don't think I'm allowed to talk about the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> or you will be banned in China. Uh, Oculus Rift HD with uh, motion tracking. Indeed. It's... Oh, what's his code name? Lost my time. I know, it's, it's the main image for Twan Camera. I can't even bring it up now. Uh, it has Crystal, a Co- Crystal Cove. Crystal Cove. That's the one. So, as someone. Awesome. Yes. As someone with the Oculus Rift development kit now, yes. where do you stand with something like that? So, I mean, it's badass. Like, um, there's still problems to be had. Um, so there were some issues, well, lots of issues with motion sickness. Like I played it, played on it for like 
just over half an hour, and I was ill for the whole rest of the day. Like, I went to bed that night, and the room was moving. Like, bad. <laughs> Granted, I, did, I, wow. I, I know, it's crazy. And I don't get motion sick, which is the big thing. But, um, but no, granted, I didn't set up the interpupular distance thing before I started playing. So that has, um, that's one factor. Uh, and also, um, the type of game, type, the type of game you play um, affects the way that you respond to the motion um, of the rift as well. Um, so mm-hmm. if you play a game where your body is supposed to be static, such as um, flying an aircraft or a starship or something, something where you're sat down as a character, then you get hit a lot less because you're seeing things static around you and things moving around you. Um, but if you're running around, say, in um, like Team Fortress, like I was, then there's more of an issue. And there's also oh, an issue with that? the resolution. It was fun. But yeah, like I said, I just got very ill, so I had to stop. But um, but no, the new one, it's 1080p. Apparently, it still hasn't completely got rid of the... Um, so the, the way the pixel's set up, because it's so close to the screen, it kind of feels like you're looking through one of those mosquito screens. Um, yeah. More so on mine, because mine's a lower-resolution version. I think mine's like 620 or something. Um, but apparently, it's a lot better with that. But the big thing with the new one is it now has little white dots all over it. Um, yeah, so it has those little white dots, and it has a camera, so it does full tracking of the motion of the Oculus. So not only can you look around, but you can lean. Uh, you, can, you can lean forward, so you get closer to the things in front of you. Um, you lean back, whatever, and it, it has that full kind of motion type so it, element. So it has the, uh, the element of depth. Is it yeah, like exactly. A so, depth perception thing. So as you're moving your head, your inner ear is giving you signals. Um, and now the rift is actually responding to more of those signals. Um, so with that Ooh. and the high resolution, apparently it, it's helping the whole motion sickness thing quite a lot. Um, so we're getting close. Like this with the armbands that you posted me a link to earlier, Dan. Yeah. Um, Dan? No, it's Ed who posted that. Um, so there's the armband that people work on. You wear the armband and it... it it detects like fine movement of your arm and fingers and stuff. Oh, like, I've seen kind of those, yeah. Microscopic muscle movement. So, no, so you're getting all this kind of these. Um, oh, what's there's a word for it? For these kind of uh, uh, controller techniques, haptics. So again, all these haptic control um, things in there. It's it, we're getting close. Like it's exciting just using this riff. The, even the basic kind of original rift is exciting. It seems like we're getting closer and closer to, to full virtual reality. I have yeah, exactly. I have a new idea for the rift, but I don't want to share it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's... just teasing. But I, you say I think it on air, I, it, and you don't want to you don't want to share it. Yeah, well, I think I think it's we actually me and uh, this I have an intern working with me right now at uh, at my office and. Uh, we were talking about the new Oculus Rift the other day when we saw it, and um, I came up with the idea. Like, right now, the Oculus Rift is, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty much just two screens in front of your eyes, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. So I came up with a new idea how to make it even more realistic and add peripheral vision to it. And I so think that's a it, huge step it does actually have a lot of peripheral vision. You'd be surprised because the screens are so close to your to your face. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. I forget how many degrees, but it you do get. Um, how many? I'll have to check how many degrees it is, but you do get a lot of peripheral vision because it, because you're so close to the screens and the screens are so wide. Uh huh. Um, so yeah. So no, it is very much like you're in it. Let me just Google this. Mm. Now, when that you hook that up, when you hook that up to your computer, does that hook up, in, hook up into like two DVI ports? Is that how it works? So it comes with its own little box, uh, okay. and the box. So the, the box plugs in through your DVI or whatever, uh, and that that um, converts the stream. But what the computer is actually putting out 
um, is a split screen. So it's pointing out the left and right eye in a barrel. It goes through a barrel um, uh, barrel shader. So um, what you'll actually, if you look at videos of people using the Rift and they're doing the raw output to screen as well, you'll see both eyes are represented. So one's on one half screen, the other's on the other half screen. Um, right. And the box takes that image uh, and sorts out all the kind of the barrel shader, shader stuff which you need because of how close you are to the screens and puts the output onto the, each of the two individual screens in your eyes. So um, you only need one, one output because it's actually just outputting one split image and each eye is getting one side of that image. Very interesting. Uh, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, no, you get 100, 110 degrees. Um, 110 degrees. The angle of... of, of oh, that's not bad. You, what about up and down, minutes. though? I was talking uh, about like, again, again. entire bubbles on your eyes. You know? That would be crazy. It could work, but the difficulty is just how to render the things. Because, I mean, even just having to have the uh, the barrel shader to make to distort the image so that it looks right in your eyes from such close screens is what makes things difficult. Uh, if you could just plug like cables straight into your eyeballs and feed the image directly to your brain, that'd be much better. <laughs> patented uh, the the bubbles is now patented on the Banhammer. So if Oculus Rift decides <laughs> they want to try to do it, they have to pay they have to pay the Banhammer royalties. That is all. <laughs> you could, you could totally have some bug eye goggle things. Yes, I'm all about it. I like the, I like the idea of the Oculus Rift, but I also like the idea of the Oculus Rift with that uh, thing that you walk on. Oh yeah, what's that called? That was another Kickstarter project, which failed, oh. by the way. Did it? That failed, and the and the body armor failed as well, I believe. Ah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It was a thing on uh, yeah, that we that we talked about on on Shark. Uh, something. Sharknado? No. Yeah. Amazing yeah. movie. Yeah. Megalodon? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am so confused. Simon, get out of the water! There's Megalodons! <laughs> if you guys haven't watched uh, the Battlefield 4 episode of... Uh, Battlefield Friends, you must go do that so you understand that joke. Shark Tank. Thank, thank you, Prospala. Shark Tank. Wait, the, what? the walking the... thing failed on the Shark Tank? Yeah, on Shark, Shark Tank's the, the show. He, he, the, the, the developer of the walking thing went to Shark Tank to try to garner uh, more funding so he could develop further, and Shark Tank didn't like his, his proposal. Really? The sh they went to the Shark Tank TV show, guys? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's Shark Tank TV show? Oh, now I remember. Yeah, we talked about it briefly. About it briefly. No, I, did. I completely I... missed that conversation. I didn't Shark Tank that. is a TV show in America, Dave, where inventors can take their ideas to get more money. Yeah, we have a similar thing in the UK called Dragon's Den. Okay. Actually, well, we have originally, we have sharks here. You guys have dragons out there. It all works. Um, I don't think Americans believe in dragons. So, whereas we know that we actually had dragons and, and David killed them. Hey, uh, you know my one of my favorite movies is How to Raise Your Dragon. Okay, that was very informative about raising a dragon. It was all that yeah. factual information. So the Virtuix Omni, yes, that's, that's the that one. was it. it. That was it. Yeah, if it did fail. They're still doing pretty well. They have a website and everything. That doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. But Dave, Dave Dave's pointing out here, um, the reason it failed was because it needed the people to buy the Oculus Rift. So they say, sell five thousand rifts. Um, 
would buy the base for another three hundred. How many people would actually go and pick up the base for three another three hundred dollars? Yeah. Oh. I mean, the they got is... publicity. And they need it, so. Yeah. Is that Ro is Road on there? Road is on here. Road's watching, and we told him he's wrong, and now he's mad. Anyway, <laughs> um, I didn't realize he was logged in as me. At the same time, I'm logged in as me. Anyway, so new Oculus Rift looks amazing. I think it's a great idea. I love the motion tracking. Um, it's a, it's definitely a step forward in the right direction for VR gaming. For those of you, for those of us who are willing to play it and want to play it, um, I, would, I would be willing to if I had the the, the cash to drop into it. Do you think the Oculus would help you, Dave or Dan? It might. I mean, it, as it would, an able it, gamer, it would be a um, it would definitely be a different experience. And and for those who, um, maybe uh, are visually impaired, um, it, it would definitely give them a, a different avenue to try to to game with. Um, for me, I'm. Well, so we're hoping to... that you can start smoking pot here soon, anyway. So that'll help you out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no that's uh, not happening and you know that yes it will oh it will happen <laughs> pot will be legalized and i'll show you that video again you'll be like yeah all right i'll give it a shot i, I think be awesome what might help the, the most with people who have like palsy related um uh, issues is like that band um that we were talking about earlier because it allows you to start mapping things to gestures and having it yeah. based on the movements or the um, the intent to make the movements rather than the ability to have the strength to actually do something like push a button or move a mouse. Just the, the yeah. idea of doing some gestures with your hands and arms will give you power to do more things in that way. Oh, absolutely. She's I kind of cool. 100%. I, I actually came up with another Able Gamer thing, man. You come Just up with a bunch of there. Able Gamer stuff. I do, man, because I want you to play Battlefield with us, and I came up with a good one this time, I think. Go I for think it. it's a good one. Go for it. I don't know if I want to share it. <laughs> of course you don't. <laughs> I don't want somebody to steal my idea. It's fucking awesome. Copyright it right here on the show. It's copyright. All right, here we go. It's copyright on the show. So here's what happens. You know how you can buy those pedals that are just go under your under your desk for people that want to lose weight. So this is also going to help fat gamers too, right? <laughs> you know, to be go with me correct. on this. <laughs> I'm fat. I'm not. I'm not lying. You know, I got an elliptical out in the other room. I'm starting to use. Um, here's the deal. All right, so you got because that was the big thing that I started thinking about. You know, like gamers, you know, if they would do something, a lot of us would be a lot thinner than we are. You know, just just ten minutes a day. Oh, you know, absolutely. starting out, we would be a lot thinner than a lot of us are, and there wouldn't be as many stink asses at at PAX. Um, but but here's here's how it all boils down. So, you get one of those little pedal things, right? And you can get programmed and hook up to your computer, and it can change the resistance on it and do whatever else. And that'll help the people with weight problems. But then I thought, of, then I I looked it up online. I actually found that there is actually one of those available already. Like those little pedal things under your desk? That, that's actually a real thing. People have already made that. Right. So I said, okay, well, let's take this the next step and let's let's make it available for able gamers. And what if, like, you could pedal, right? And you can, like, lean, pedal forward or backwards so you can walk forward or walk backwards. Right. Lean left and right so you can strafe left and right. And it could turn ever so slightly to make your character turn in-game. Well, there you go. See? That's that's amazing shit. It is, and it, that's even better than a little pad thing under your feet. It is. That you got to stomp on. It is. It would it would free up at least in my case it would free up my WSD fingers to do something else. Oh yeah, I mean, that would be great for MMOs too. Do <laughs> <laughs> not do do well. No one to know. Uh... No, but people people idea. have come up with all sorts of contraptions with with the Oculus Rift to 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 enable them to exercise. They've hooked up the Oculus Rift to to a treadmill that so people can just kind of move and and run 
and bicycles as well. Yeah. That's a great idea. I want an Oculus Rift so I can ride a roller coaster. <laughs> there, there's only roller coaster apps for the Oculus Rift. There is. Uh, okay, well, I don't have one yet, so I have to get one, and then I can do it. Well, come down for a bit. You can, you can have a play with mine. Yes, I'm coming to Dallas. I'll be there. In, I'll be there tomorrow. It's probably warm down there. Actually, how far are you from Houston? I forget. Um, couple hours, like four hours. <sighs> Damn it, too far. I'll be in Houston in a couple weeks. Not that Houston, far. Texas. Uh, yeah, they're the, they're well, on the weekend. Soon. They might swing down and, and say hello. Yeah, we'll see. See what's going on. But um. Yeah. Do so you guys have anything else you wanted to bring up for today? Oh, we were talking about something earlier in uh, before the show started. Um, What's that? That uh, one of the rings online. The, the the license for that has been extended through 2017. Um, so Ooh. we get more Lord of the Rings online content supposedly through uh, 2017 versus 2014, where it was supposed to end. Or previously, That's so they can add Hobbit stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the game's been going well and been reasonably successful for a long time. So, um, and it hasn't been seen as an embarrassment to the IP. So, I can't see why they would pull it. Even though some of the games, which I don't really see as being an embarrassment to the IP, have been pulled for yeah. various lame reasons. But um, I guess that's, that's the risk you take when you run with somebody else's IP. Yeah. yeah. You don't have much creative yeah. control. Oh, you, you get the upside is you get all the fans, so you know you've got a um, community of people to um, pitch your game to. But the downside is that you can have it sunsetted without even any recourse to uh, to keep the thing alive. Which is kind of shoddy. But, um, I actually got the uh, opportunity um, in my previous studio um, to. Do some work for uh, Warner Brothers, I think it was. Oh no, not Warner Brothers. Um, MGM. Not sure. But one, one of one of the big, the one of the big companies. Um, I should yeah. say them all, but one of the big companies. Um, they have a division which is dedicated to outsourcing the creation of games related to um, films that have been released. Um, oh, nice. Right. Oh, nice. So, and they were like, yeah, and we'll basically, we've got a big pot of money. We'll just give you lots of money to make this game and then and, and we'll release it. Um, but the, the control you'd have would be limited because of the tight nature of the IP. And, um, and, and yeah, there'd be lots of pressure there as well because you're, you're on tight time schedules because they want the release of the game to tie in with the release of the film. So it's not a case of, Oh, it's not quite ready, so we'll push it back a few months. It's a case of it's gonna go, ship it, ship it. The films come out. It's, uh... <laughs> I don't it, care if it's shit. But I mean, the, 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 one of the films that, he, that the guy I was speaking to, he, um, he's the head of all that stuff um, at some nice party at E3. Um, he was he had us in mind to do um, a game related to the um, Snow White and the Huntsman. Because he saw a lot of the stuff we'd done around our early videos would have been great as a setting for that game. So, there you go. My God. You realize what could have happened to that studio <laughs> if you would have done yeah. that? Yeah. Sold our soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, the, the big pile of money oh. was definitely tempted. But, uh, other considerations. Um, one being that they can pull the IP. So good for Lord of the Rings Online that they're going to keep on rocking on for a oh, absolutely. while absolutely. yet. Hmm. So, I'm still confused, though. Like You said there was a, another article that said that there aren't going to be any more dungeons for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find that now, and it, it seems to have disappeared from the new section of Polygon. But what I what I did read was yeah that there weren't going to be any more dungeons created for it. They were, they were going to expand the the, the contents already there, but they weren't going to generate anything new. Um, there were the, they they basically were scrapping player housing, citing technical difficulties. 
Um, they weren't going to. No, have- we need the houses. Yeah, I, I am completely in agreement with you. I um, I have one hundred percent. Um, but you know, um, yeah, I think every game needs some form of player housing. I mean, that's just kind of the way I'm I'm wired. Whether you place the house yourself or whether it's a separate instance area, I think people like to show off their their trophies. EverQuest did it best. EverQuest 2. Um, think. End of story. Yep. Yep. I of, of all the of all the of all the companies that have done player housing, EverQuest 2 did it the best. I honestly like. <clears throat> go, go ahead, Dave. So even over and above Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, I was yes. gonna say I I I think I liked the Star Wars Galaxy system best. So, so just just for the sake of argument, what do you feel was better about the EverQuest housing versus um, the Star Wars Galaxy style housing? Well, Star Wars Galaxy's housing, the reason I didn't like it was because it just everyone, you know, you plopped your house, you you took over a piece of land, you know, you didn't have to. It just kind of filled up and kept filling up, where it was just instanced in uh, EverQuest. I enjoyed that, and I could, well, both both games you can make everything for the houses anyway. But, um, yeah, that's that's what got me into it. That's what got me into EverQuest's house because I, I like the fact that I could go to, I could buy quote unquote an apartment in the main city. Yeah, so there is that. Um, yeah, um, I mean, the Lord of the Rings housing is not too dissimilar. Um, it's the instance instance housing zone. Um, and mm-hmm. is, uh, you can get various different sizes of house and then do the various decorations. And I actually really like the Dark Age of Camelot housing system, even though it was a shame that, See, it, was I never, shame that it was in. Yeah, I, I never got to experience that one, so I wouldn't be able to comment on it. Yeah, so I mean that that was quite close to Webquest too, as well. In that you could, if you defeated like a world boss, you could get the head stuffed and mount it on the wall and. And you put in crafting stations and adding a merchant. But because it, it was instance, but it was instance into housing zones, so you had little neighborhoods. Um, and other people could move into your neighborhood and buy one of the plots of land and build a house there. And, um, right. and, and then there'd be little brokers who'd give you a listing of all the different shops people set up in the area to so be able to run around and find all these goods and um, explore people's gardens and all that fun stuff. So I, I like... Housing systems that have some form of community element to them. As opposed to just being a house that you and your friends can go in. Well, EverQuest, EverQuest was you were able to visit anybody's house. You were, if they allowed it. But it was a case if you were teleporting into the house. Yeah. You weren't well, I mean, around and just no, seeing a didn't... neighborhood full of houses that were owned by people. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, un- I understand what you're saying now. I mean, it was cool. Like in EverQuest Two, when I when I originally played that when it first released, um, I was in the the closed beta for that one. But uh, when I first played it, I had a Hobbit. I set up my Hobbit hole to be a tavern, and all my guildies um, helped me build furniture to put out tables, to set up a bar, and put barrels up and decorate it all like a tavern. Um, and then yeah. I had you know, other guildies who were um, cook, chefs, and whatnot that were making food. And ale and stuff. And I'd sit when I was at work. I'd set up my character in, in NPC vendor mode, which was awesome, by the way. Um, so he'd be sitting See, they, there. They got rid say, of that by the time I was playing. Oh, they got rid of sucks. NPC vendor mode. They put in. Uh, uh, you could just put crates in your house that where people could go and purchase from. That sucks. It was awesome that like I could stand there, people could interact with me and see all my wares and interact and sell, but I could still like chat with them as that character. And so I right. basically I'd, I'd be at work and I'd have my one computer with my vendor mode just sat there waiting for people to come in um, while I'm doing my work. And if I see someone come in, then I switch over, say hello, interact with them a bit. They get surprised because they don't expect someone to actually be there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. I, I never got to my um, so my ultimate goal was to have like throngs of people in there, everyone coming along to Fuzzyfoot's Tavern to um, like chill out and have a drink and have a social space. That never really took off, but 
it had the potential, which was cool. Um, and I think the which big is thing, where the you got the I... idea. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's the seed of, the, of many ideas in my gaming career. I, I think one thing, one of the things that stopped that from being success is that people weren't able to just happen across my tavern. Um, they'd have to go to the housing portal. They'd have to l- run through the list of names. They'd have to find the people they want. They'd have to realize that mine's a special place. Um, whereas if you have things in a neighborhood setting, people run past. And you can decorate the outside in such a way to invite people in. Um, so right. I think it would have been more, right. success- more successful in that setting. But I, I get what you mean with, having, with, with the benefits of the EQ2 housing system. But I just like communities of houses. Even if they're in yeah. <sighs> I can go on and on with housing. Oh, so could Wild I. Stars, yes. Wild Stars housing is supposed to be pretty good. But I've not I, seen anything on that. I've been avoiding the Wild Star news um, because I quite fancy giving it a try when it comes out, and I don't want to be jaded by the news. I'm expecting yes. to be one thing. Yes, I'm, I'm giving you a virtual hug right now because I agree with that exact statement. Because I mean, it's it's hype tastic right now. Um, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I I I just don't want to be a party to that. I will I will say this: I was one of the first people to play Wild Star. Um, back when they brought it to PAX 2010, I believe it was. There was they had this huge booth, and nobody was stopping by because it wasn't on anybody's radar at all at the time. And uh, I went and played through what they had, their their tech demo available at the time. And it was an interesting style to the game. Like, I honestly didn't think that it was going to go as far as it has. Um, I thought it was going to be more just that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, looks, it looks interesting. And Seer says he's been playing... Wildstar for a long time, but see I, again, I don't, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. If I, if I do get it, I want to wait until it releases. I don't want to deal with, you know, disappointment. I don't want to deal with, uh, you know, the same shit that I went through with with tour. I don't want to deal with that again. You know, I, I might even hop in the game and go find a different guild that I can just kind of hop on with a bunch of new people and play with at that time. I'm not going guild hunting. I'm not doing anything like that. Because last time, last like three games that I did that for, they were complete flops, complete disappointments to me. You know, you name it, it was a failure. Yeah, and I don't want that again at all. So, hope yeah, the best. yeah. The, it, the the difficulty is like necessarily to create the hype. Lots of grand claims and promises are made early. Yeah. Um, when people are driving a hype machine, and I just want to see the facts. Like when it comes down to it, I want to see. What is this game? What is it about? Is it something I'm going to enjoy? Let me just play it. I don't want to be yeah. reading all the biased, either the biased, this is going to be awesome, this is the best game on the planet, this is different from everything I've ever seen. I also don't want to see the, this is a load of crap, this is exactly the same as every other MMO out there, and um, it's not revolutionizing at all. I just want to see, what is this doing? What is this doing well? Is this something I'm going to enjoy? Um, and well, you know- I'll do well. Another um, another MMO that I did that with, which I was actually happy that I did that with, because I st- I enjoy the game and I still enjoy it. It's just that the people that I was playing with at the time decided to either stop playing it or go play other things. Was uh, Rift? I really enjoyed Rift as an MMO. Right. I think it, I, I still think it's a great MMO, and they have you know one of the best free to play models there is out there. Yeah, and they so. they carry that over to Defiance, which is also I enjoyed thoroughly um, yeah. for all of its all of its issues. I'm going to it with no expectations. Um, right, I I really enjoyed it, but I, it was always soured by the fact that the um, interaction between that game and the TV show wasn't where it should have been, and where they'd hyped. Where they said it was going like, to be. Yeah, yeah, and I got so it's the same deal. I got sucked into that whole of them talking at Comic Con about how the film's going to tie into the game, the things the players do in the game is going to affect the film. Um, thankfully, when when I was watching all that stuff, I'm at that point in my gaming career and my game development career that I can see through the hype, um, and I can see when they're saying, 
oh, the, the player's actions are going to affect the, the TV show. They don't actually mean you have choice as a player that determines the TV show. They're just saying you're going to take part in events that also have a knock-on effect in the, in the game in some way because it has shared lore. But um, if I was my um, like 16-year-old self hearing that, I would have all these grand visions with the creative brain I have of how all this stuff could work out. And I would be massively disappointed. Uh, but as it was, right. I was only, only slightly miffed <laughs> because I kind of expected yeah. it. What was uh, Guild Wars 2 was another one of those MMOs that promised a lot. Um, yeah. One of the big things that they promised was decisions that you made would make create phases for your oh, character yeah. only. Yeah. And if like you and I walked into a city together, if you made a certain choice at the beginning of the game, your city might look completely different from mine. And it was also supposed to have like some kind of factioning as well, where if I helped the centaurs on the first mission outside of whatever city then my city later on or i was getting help later on from the centaurs where they were you might have helped the the people in the carriage and the people were more helpful to you later on you know it's it's it was terrible that said i mean guild wars 2 2 was a good game i mean it it did overpromise, but it was overall a a successful game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's similar well, overhype with. Um, so um, Sarah is talking about NC stuff. I think you're talking about Arena Net there, but NC Soft also like massively hyped uh, Secret World. Yes, they did. Yes. Oh yeah. my god. Oh. Well, in Secret, in Secret World, uh, Secret World's not actually a bad game. No, oh, Secret I have World a lot of fun is. That is is a it's not an MMO it's it, well i mean it's an MMO but it's not a traditional go do it's, this quest go do this quest it, MMO it, it's, yeah, a it's not a puzzler theme park, MMO. Theme park per se MMO yeah yeah it, it's a puzzler you have got to I mean, go I, you know I, I, solve issues yeah and i i like the fact that they used actual like browser with actual web pages to give you clues to various or to give you something to investigate for the various investigation missions which were badass but what happened is exactly what i knew was going to happen is that yeah. the next people come along go along now you um do the search terms to try and find the information for the quest you end up getting the uh, the walkthroughs and the spoilers and it's all been done a hundred times before right. so it's 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 almost impossible like the, the, the actual link you're looking for is probably the kind of at the bottom of the page. It's right. All the rest is is walkthroughs, which is a crying yeah, shame. Ro- Road's been um, Road's been dumping a lot of time into uh, Secret World. Yeah, I mean, I I thoroughly enjoy it, and I kind of try to blink at myself when I'm doing those investigation missions to not see those walkthroughs and things. But it's just it's hard. Yeah. Like actually having to yeah. decipher Morse code, for example, in one of the missions. What well, the game's done that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, um, it, it's, actually, it's just a lot. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it cast me. So it cast me back. There was a game um, in memoriam. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Um, it's it was the first game of this sort where you actually had to do actual internet research to play the game. It's by that. So have you heard of that game? Uh. Uh-uh. So it was probably one of the first memoriam. like the first augmented reality type game. So you played the role of this investigator investigating this. Um, I think it's a, a kidnapper or a serial killer or something. I can't remember exactly, but you basically, you have to solve um, these puzzles he sends you. So it's like a proper psychology guy, um, psychological guy. But basically when you start the game, um, you register with your email address and periodically it actually, the game emailed you with updates or clues or messages oh, from some remember characters this. in the game. Didn't and, they call you as well? Uh, I'm not sure about calling. I don't recall that, but they definitely emailed you. Um, and you get all these email messages through from these people. Um, but also, uh, most of the puzzles had were based in either sites they've set up for it or in real kind of historical information. So you'd be doing... Like hours of historical research into like ancient Rome, for example, to come up with information 
um, to 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 kind of get what you need to solve these puzzles and move forward. Um, so a mixture of those and your traditional kind of logic puzzles and things that the guy would send you, but it was all pretty awesome. Um, but mm. that, because it was run through a central server, though, that's all been shut down. So I picked it up a couple of years ago. I found the copy of the Peter. I was like, that's awesome. Got back and it, it would not work because all the server infrastructure was gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sucks. But it would it'd be awesome to do something like that again sometime. So maybe a new studio could sit like, in the list of uh, games they may like to make. <laughs> I was going to say, so that's where your interest in augmented reality came from. It's, uh, a little bit. <laughs> Uh. All right. Uh. Well, I don't want to keep running this on too long. Actually, I wanted to stop at ten thirty, but that's fine. We got started late, so um, this was day two of podcasting. It was out of thirty. Hopefully, you guys are going to go and spread the word to your friends. You can go do that. It'd be awesome. Uh, if you want to learn more information about this podcast and all the other podcasts we do, you can check us out at www.twancamera.com. dot com. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook and twitch.tv, all slash Twoncamera. You can also get us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Twoncamera. And uh, Twoncamera ENT, sorry, for YouTube. And uh, rate, hate, and subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you to everybody who goes and does that. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. And you can also check out our two sponsors, Twoncamera.com slash Audible. Go get yourself a free audio book. you got to remember, you have to sign up for the 30-day account for it to count for us um and then you can cancel that uh audiobook subscription if you don't like it but we encourage you to keep it obviously and you can also go to twonkhammer.com slash amazon go make your purchase using that link and a portion of what you purchase uh money wise will go back to us as well so that would be awesome if you wouldn't mind doing that we appreciate it and I think that's it. So don't forget, check us out tomorrow. Again, twitch.tv on Tuesday, the 14th. Twitch.tv slash Camera at 9.30. We'll be recording live. You'll obviously be able to download Day 3's podcast um, that the next morning. Well, that night, hopefully, I'll have them done. You'll be able to download it and listen in and just get a, get a better feel for us. Again, it's very important during the 30 days of podcast that you get out to your friends Spread the word that we're doing it. Uh, the different hosts will be on and off all week or all month. Um, I'll primarily be on every episode, but uh, everybody else will be popping in and out. Yeah, I'll try so, to make most uh, of them. Yeah, that's that's fine. Hey, I mean, if we have if we have a full roster of ten of us, that's fine. Uh, you know, I don't care as long as we all have something to talk about. Um, but yeah, that that would be awesome. Um, see or yes, I believe as long as you go to Amazon.com slash Twan Camera and you buy stuff, I, I believe it works. I don't know if there's a specific link to the Kindle store or not. You can buy Kindle stuff through the normal storefront and then it, it syncs up in the background. Yeah, so TwanCamera.com slash Amazon is how you use it. It'll automatically kick it over to an Amazon link. I think it's like TwanCam-20 or something like that. Um, yep, that's what it is. I'm there right now. Yeah, so if you buy anything from Amazon, you just click the button, and then uh, any purchase you ma- purchases you make, we get a portion of the money that you spend, and it helps us out in the long run, get, uh, get some things going. But uh, I think that's it. So if you guys don't have anything else you want to add, nope. take that as a no. I think we're good for the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Have yourself an awesome and safe evening. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace out. Farewell.